Okay, this is a book review. And the book is called um, What is Missing from Medicine by Stari Stanchik. And, you know, she's a nice lady. She's a physician. She's board certified internal medicine and in infectious disease. And she was working as a physician, and she'd been working really long hours. She's a workaholic. She's up all night on call. She was eating a lot of junk food, not exercising. When she was on call one night, and she tried to get out of bed, and she couldn't move her legs. Uh, she was rushed over for a brain MRI and was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. She was said to have classic brain MRI findings, which is typically uh, perpendicular flare hyperintensities relative to the lateral ventricles. That's called Dawson's fingers appearance, and that's the classic finding in multiple sclerosis. Um, she then went and see to see a neurologist specialist in multiple sclerosis, and she was told that she could expect a progressive decline. She was put on a bunch of pills, had side effects from those, was put on other pills. And um, she was just told, you know, tough luck. This is what's going to happen, and you're just going to get sicker and sicker. Um, in her early 30s, she was walking under the cane and crutches and then a walker. She intermittently had to wear a diaper from incontinence. Um, you can get, you know, a bladder neuropathy, for example. Um, and then one time, she saw a study claiming that blueberries could decrease MS. And that really got her attention. It was sort of like she saw the light that maybe diet was related to MS. Her doc at that time told her, oh, no, diet's got nothing to do with it. But, you know, he thought it was genetic. However, she looked up the twin studies, identical twin studies, showed an only about, in the ballpark, a 25% overlap with autoimmune diseases. If it was genetic, you'd expect all the identical twins to get the immune diseases, the autoimmune diseases. And that reassured her she was on the right track that probably a lot of it was due to environmental exposures, diet exposures, or something of the like, and which meant that it's potentially controllable. Um, she found out about Roy Swank. Roy Swank is a neurologist from Canada who later went to work in Oregon. And he had, this is back in the 1950s. He had read about the multiple sclerosis data coming out in Norway. The coastal fishing areas had very low amounts of MS, whereas the central dairy areas had very high amounts of MS and worse uh, long-term outcomes. So Dr. Swank took all his patients off dairy, put them on a low-fat diet, and he um, followed them for many years, over 34 years. Um, Dr. Swank published his data um, on 34-year follow-up of multiple sclerosis patients, and he had a lot of patients. And um, he found that 95% of them were still capable of their activities of daily living after 34 years with MS. Whereas I think I read a study at uh, like 10 years, 50% of patients with MS can't uh, you know, carry out independently their activities of daily living. So Dr. Swank has by far, by far the best results of any doctor in the world for multiple sclerosis that I'm aware of. By far. No one's even close. Dr. Swank uh, was friends with Dr. McDougall, and Dr. McDougall actually took some of the follow-up work for his clinic. Okay, so that, that's really extraordinary stuff. Um, Dr. Stanchik switched to a low-fat vegan diet for herself. Uh, she also made a lot of effort to get more sleep. The body needs to sleep to heal. She'll go to bed from 9 p.m., wake up at 5 a.m. So she's trying to spend at least eight hours a night, you know, sleeping. She goes into great detail about everything she learned about sleep and how to improve one's sleep. Um, she started exercising a lot. At first, it was very difficult because exercise can make the MS patient worse. It sort of heats up the body and they become more symptomatic. But she sort of pushed through it with a stationary bike and whatnot, later walking, jogging, running. And, and um, rather extraordinary, she went and was able to run a marathon. So this from walking with a walker to being a marathon runner. That's an incredible turnaround. Um, after now she's had a diagnosis of multiple sclerosis for over 25 years, and she's off all medications, doesn't take any medications at all. She's still clinically working as a physician. Uh, so I thought that was extraordinary. I think she's smart. I think she's nice. She's got interviews. Uh, videos, a whole bunch of videos on YouTube. You could watch her videos. She was interviewed by Chef AJ as well. And, you know, it's a good interview. She's a smart lady. Uh, what do I think are weaknesses of the book? Eh, she says it's okay to eat fish, which I think is kind of an ignorant, wimpy thing to say. When you study fish, all the problems with PCBs, mercury, saturated fat, it's usually fried, other contaminants. You know, the waterways are like a sewer, and farm fish are also fed lousy stuff like, you know, GMO you know, heavily sprayed foods. Uh, fish is all bad. There's no good reason to eat fish. And I look at the book by Hightower, the lady Jane Hightower intern who's talking about all these yuppies becoming demented from eating fish. So I would disagree with that. What else? She said you can have tiny amounts of olive oil. I would just say no olive oil. 
I think if you tell patients you can have a little bit of this or a little bit of that, they end up eating a lot of it and they end up worse off. It's best to tell them no olive oil. She herself maybe would do it, but I would think that's a mistake. I wouldn't recommend doing that. I would recommend avoiding all oils. She also has a daily cup of coffee, which, you know, she might be able to get away with it. And, yeah, certainly she's avoided this. She's made a fantastic recovery, but you never know how far you have to take it <clears throat> to get better. So my advice would be do everything you can to get better. And, you know, coffee's a bad habit. I talk, I got lectures on all the problems of coffee. So, you know, she's doing good, but, you know, hopefully she'll, she'll stay off it for life, you know, have a, a complete cure. She's obviously doing fantastic, but she had a pretty serious MS with a positive brain MRI. Uh, lesions on her brain MRI. She also emphasizes meditation a lot more than prayer, and that's kind of like, you know, the correct thing to do nowadays. It's kind of cool to not talk much about religion, but I'm a big fan of religion because I just, I study tons of biographies of geniuses. I mean, you look at them. Isaac Newton and a lot of other people who, tremendous athletes. Religion, look at the people in Alcoholics Anonymous who turn their life around. Religion is been proven to have tremendous benefit for lots of people and lots of really high achievers are really religious. It energizes a person to think their life has meaning and that their efforts have meaning. You know, look at James Tour, the modern scientist, kind of like the modern equivalent of Isaac Newton. But all in all, Sari Stanchik's book, I think it was quite good. I think her story is excellent. I think she is sort of the embodiment of what Swank's ideas can lead to. She didn't just survive MS. She's running marathons, you know, and it reminds me like of the cancer patients, Ruth Heidrich, PhD, and, um, you know, Janet Mary Wakelin. They both wrote books about their recovery from metastatic breast cancer. They're both running marathons, okay? This is extraordinary stuff. Instead of going down the tubes, fading out and dying on a whole bunch of pills and being bankrupt, they're getting stronger, faster, better running marathons. That's rather extraordinary. And it shows you the power of a plant-based diet. You know, you don't know if everybody's going to have these good results and nobody's going to ever do a study because there's no money in it, but these are extraordinary results.